What is up, my fellow carbon-based life forms? Paul Sun Hyung Lee here in my geeky basement, inviting you, inviting you, oh my god, welcoming you to the 26th episode of Fun Boxing Sundays. How y'all doing? I hope you can hear me, first of all. Uh, looks like on my end, everything's good, but I'm a little bit paranoid because it happens once and you get worried about that. Uh, before we begin today's episode, I just want to reach out and, um, you know, special shout out to my buddy Hip Hoptimus Prime. Um, I, I know you suffered a huge uh, setback uh, just a couple of days ago. My heart goes out to you. Um, for those of you on the channel, there is uh, on the community section of uh, Bitter Asian Dude, uh, the homepage, go to the community tab, and uh, there's a link to a GoFundMe page. Uh, this is for our friend Hip Optimus Prime, who suffered a, a tragic loss. Uh, there was an apartment fire and he lost all of his p possessions. And uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're, you, you know, I, 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 I'm assuming that you're okay, um, but I just wanted to let you know that you are in my thoughts and uh, there's a link to a GoFundMe page uh, to help Nigel out uh, during these times. So if you can help, please do. Um, any, any amount will help. And if you can retweet it out there or share it on your socials, uh, get the story out there, I think this is going to be a good example of the good that this community can do for one of our own. Anyways, Nigel, uh, from me to you, I love you, brother. I'm glad you're safe. And uh, anything we can do to help you out, uh, we will do for you. Um, and on that note, hey, welcome. This is episode 26 of Fun Boxing Sundays. I am Paul Sun Hyung Lee, but you all knew that. And uh, we are doing an unboxing, the 26th episode of uh, Fun Boxing Sundays on the 26th. And what a quinky dink. We're doing unboxings on Boxing Day. So uh, here we are. I stayed home today. Um, you know, just with everything that's going on, just want to hunker down with my family. Um, and, uh, you know, spent the, I've been spending the last few days with family, just sort of relaxing and, and recharging because in the new year, there's a the big push, obviously, uh, getting back to work and working on some big, uh, things, uh, in the new years. As you all know, I've been cast in, the the television adaptation, the live action adaptation of Avatar, The Last Airbender and playing Uncle Iroh. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I got to relocate out to Vancouver for the next five months or so, starting in January. So I'm just sort of getting ready for that. Uh, mentally and physically, uh, but in the meantime, uh, I have been spending it with family. Anyways, this is something that I love to do every Sunday, Fun Boxing Sundays, with all of you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. For those of you who are new to this or have never watched a Fun Boxing Sunday episode, it's pretty simple. Basically, uh, I unbox a bunch of geeky collectibles that I have lying around or I've purchased recently, and uh, I do a half ass review, and then we chat. That's about it. It's really, really low key, no pressure. It's a fantastic community of folks out there. Um, we get along fa uh, fantastically, I like to think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's tons of fun. And uh, this is something that uh, really is, is, is a touchstone for me. I love doing that. So before we begin, Let's do a big shout out and uh, go through who's in the basement with us today. We've got Sean P, my brother from LA, in the basement. Rebecca, Rebecca Martello is in the basement as well. Hello, hello. We've got Mel Dade. It's Beer O'Clock with a bad collab brew. Funny you should mention that, Mel, because I too am going to be drinking this uh, this special brew. And we'll talk about this a little bit later on in the stream. But cheers to you. Cheers to everyone. Uh, happy holidays. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, we're going to say hello to Tommy K. He's in the basement. Everybody, shut up, Tommy. Just for you, Tommy. Uh, Aaron S. is in the basement. <laughs> We've got Anton Attard. We have Christopher Colvin, my friend. How are you? Uh, Melissa K. from Sweden is here. Hey, hey. Um, let's see, let's see. We're doing the roll call for the Bitter Brigade. Um, Hip Hoptimus Prime is here, Nigel. So great to see you here, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Um, and I've got a little something for you for later on. So just uh, remind me to, to uh, reach out to you. You can remind me. I'll, I'll reach out to you and uh, we'll talk. Okay, my friend? Um, Bad Wolf Media is in the basement. How are you, Mike? Uh, we also have Mike Yuan as well in the basement. Uh, Patrick Really Vasquez. Welcome, my friend. Joe Chu Fook is in the basement. We also have uh, Colin Hollis, my neighbor in the basement. Rooster. 
uh, or Roost 73R, Rooster. That's clever. And you are here early for once. That's fantastic. We have a new member. Walker Clan is now a part of the Bitter Brigade Officers Corps. Welcome, Walker Clan. Uh, we also have in the basement Brandy Woods, fantastic artist. I just got your card in the mail. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for that Christmas card. And thank you to everybody who sent me a Christmas card. Um, it's it's something that we're getting away from in this day and age, but it, it, which makes it even more special when you get them. So thank you so much for, for sharing those those sentiments, uh, either online or with, with a physical card. Joe, I also got your card too. Thank you so much. Um, Darren Lai, my friend, the, the CEO of the Rebel Legion is in the basement today. We have Angela Lee, my Nuna, my older sister. Hi, Angie. How are you? Um, let's see. John Carmen is in the basement today. And... Uh, Having fun, Anna Lee. She is, of course, my wife. She's moderating. I think I saw Miles, uh, 1,000 miles an hour. Was my, there he is right there. <laughs> He's <laughs> my youngest is here. We've got uh, Steve Three, my brother from another mother in Vancouver. Louis Libitz is in the basement as well. Bitter Troll is in the basement. Hello. Um, and then let's see. Ah, Daniel Sertle is in the basement. Hey, special shout out to my nerd crew. Uh, that that crazy collectors group that keeps me enabled and gets those hard to find objects for me uh, they are kind of like uh, you know the my, my little spies that go out and grab things for me when I can't and it's nice when I can return the favor every once in a while but Daniel's part of that crew we also have James who's part of that crew and we have TJ and we have Kevin and uh, uh, who am I missing and Abel of course and Ka uh, Callan Kalen 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 you spell with K buddy I, it, it throws me off. Um, who am I missing? Am I missing anybody else from that crew? I said James already, right? Well, anyways, big shout out for that secret nerds group out there. Um, let's see, yeah, Monster 0305. That's that's I know who you are. Uh, Damage Queen is in the basement. We've got Gary Lau here too. Uh, Tom, 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 Tom is in the basement as well. Val A is here. Hello, Val. Lee Marsh is in the basement. Um, and let me see, we're just cycling through saying hello, Walker Clan, welcome, yes, of course, I've done that, I'm catching up on the comment section, um, Chris Christie is in the basement, I see you there, uh, and I think we're just going to continue on here while I take a sip of beer. Mm. here we go, ooh, that's great, oh, and Colin, thank you so much as well for dropping off a couple of bottles of this fine, delicious brew. Um, that's, that's what neighbors do. That's what fantastic neighbors do. And I actually do have something for you as well, Colin. So uh, I'll get it to you, uh, before the week is out. Um, Gabe Jones is in the basement as is a Northern nerd cast. And I'm just waiting for, um, for a couple of other regulars. You know what? We're, we're, we'll just keep going. We'll go. We'll go. We will go. I've not been drinking. I just started drinking literally. Um, so uh, let me talk about this first. This is, of course, the uh, focus, focus, focus. There we go. Bad Collab Brew. This is actually a collaboration uh, between myself and uh, Black Lab Brewery. There's the brewery in Toronto, um, just uh, south of us. And uh, Billy uh, reached out to me. He's one of the co-owners of Black Lab Brewery and wanted to do a collaboration because uh, I'm a huge supporter of of that brewery itself just because it's cool and they, you know I've collaborated with them before um, and we wanted to help raise funds for Mutt's Dog Rescue. Now, but Mutt's is a smaller organization they used to be called uh, Black uh, Black Dog Rescue and what happened is because of all that was going on they had to shutter it but they, they've since relaunched as Mutt's and uh, this was supposed to be part of a fundraising evening we were going to hold on December 21st at Black Lab Brewery. Uh, we were going to sell this brew which uh, sort of I had a hand in, in helping to create. Uh, I was speaking to Connor who is their, their brewmaster there and I, I was talking about it was when this was weeks ago like more than six weeks ago that we we're discussing this. It was a tail end of summer and we we're talking about what kind of beer I'd like to drink and for me because I don't drink beer as often, too many carbs, uh, I wanted something a little bit lighter, something really refreshing, uh, not too hoppy, something that would be perfect at the end of a, a hot summer day of, of playing or working. And they came out and came up with this wonderful brew. It's a Hellas Lager with honey. The honey is from Rosewood Estates, uh, in I think just outside of St. Catharines in southern Ontario. 
and uh, they brewed it together. And uh, this is, yeah, this was supposed to be in collaboration uh, for a fundraiser for Mutt's Dog Rescue. Well, because of COVID, we had to cancel that event or postpone it, actually. And so we're hoping to reschedule it. But this brew is available for sale at Black Lab Brewery uh, right now. And what uh, Anne, who is one of the other co-owners of Black Lab Brewery, did, uh, she dropped off a case of beer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to personally autograph uh, a dozen or so bottles, maybe a couple of cases worth, um, and we're going to have them up. Uh, there's, there, we're looking for ways to supplement that that fundraising, whether it be another um, another sort of like an auction uh, or, or or some other event. Um, I'm also going to be offering up as well. Uh, Tops cards sort of came up with. Let me see if I can. You know, we'll do this. You, you're all familiar with this card. Right here. This is my trading card from Tops. Well, Tops was good enough to send me a bunch of these, and they are currently unsigned. But I will be signing a number of these that will be raffled off in conjunction with the beers at Black Lab Brewery. Details to follow. Uh, I will personalize these. Uh, it's great. That's the wonderful thing about this. It's not just a sticker. It'll be me actually autographing them and sort of handing them out. So these will be available uh, as well through uh, Black Lab Brewery to help raise funds for Mutt's Dog Rescue. And again, uh, links to both organizations will be added in the description below after the live stream is done. Uh, but I want to give you all a heads up about that. Um, next, uh, those next steps with it. Uh, and uh, anecdotally, a lot of friends and a lot of neighbors have reached out and they've, they've purchased this beer. And it's lovely. It is a lovely summer beer. I like it. I like it. I mean, I'm biased anyways, but I'm really enjoying it. Which brings me to the next point. Uh, for those of you who are new, we have a drinking game on this channel. It is uh, Paul's, it's, it's part of the Bitter Asian Dude drinking game. Basically, I say a lot of things on this channel. If I say certain catchphrases, then you have to drink. Like, for example, if I say nothing can be easy, well, you take a drink. If I speak of the, um, the resale value of a hot toy, in its original shipper, take a drink. If we tell Tommy to shut up, you take a drink. Oh, little things like that. Anyways, you don't have to drink alcohol. You can drink whatever you're drinking. It's just um, a fun evening. Um, and I keep saying this and I keep forgetting to do this, but we will, there are actually a formal set of rules that we can put down a list of sayings. I think we can add it to. And um, yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll post it up there and then we can all join in. Perhaps in the new year, we will be doing that. All right. So in the meantime, uh, we have a great episode today. Uh, I've been very, very excited to do this myself um, because this 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 came a while ago. Uh, you all know I love Hot Toys. That's a one six scale figure. Uh, they're about a foot in length, um, in size. The, the detail on them are incredible. They're a step up from the six inch uh, Black Series figures or the other figures that you can get on the market, which are mass produced, which is great. But this is the first time I've gone to quarter scale. Now, quarter scale is that much bigger than six scale. And I'm super excited to be sharing this with you. Um, but before I do that, I gotta, we've gotta, I've got to acknowledge, we've got a super chat from Mike Yuan. Uh, $100, jeez, Mike, what are you doing? Uh, hey, Polly, thanks for all the great work you do. That message you did really bright my cousin's day. Side note, I want to represent too. How can I get that smiky hat? Mike, Mike, honestly, um, my cup runneth over. You are, you are far too kind, my friend, and far too generous. Um, it, it was my pleasure. And after you told me about uh, what was going on in your family's you, with your cousin, it, it was a no-brainer to do. Anyways, I was, I'm happy to help. Thank you so much for your generous donation on that. Uh, you know, this is going to go right back into the channel, and I really appreciate that. So thank you so much, Mike, for me to you. Happy holidays to you and your family. Um, now, he, he did do this, and this is, feels kind of gross for me, but I'm going to do it because he asked, but he wants to know how people could get the snazzy official represent hats. Well, if you look on the bottom of your screen, you can get your official Bitter Asian, uh, Bitter Merch at BitterAsianDude.com backslash merch, where you can get a represent hat, a bitter hat, and for a limited time, we have the Purple Con exclusive uh, represent and bitter hats in royal purple. So I'll leave that scroll on the bottom. And while we have some something scrolling on the bottom, uh, that reminds me as well, uh, this channel wouldn't be what it is without the support of fabulous members. Uh, for example, we have Charles Stevens, who has just joined the Bitter Brigade as a lieutenant. And I'm going to be adding your name to this. If you look up above, this is a list of all the wonderful people who are investing in this channel. Um, and 
you know, my heartfelt thanks to you uh, for, for putting in uh, a financial donation uh, to help bring content to you. And uh, you don't have to, but I really appreciate it when you do. So thanks to all of you members out there who are doing that part of the Bitter Brigade's Officers Corps. Um, you all help make this channel push it up to the next level. Uh, and, and I am very, very grateful for that. Um, okay, we got, what do we got here? Oh, the Global Health Science Institute from New Mexico is finally here. I was waiting for you to show up before I started. So uh, now that you're here, we can begin. Okay, um, wow, I feel like I'm on CNN with all the with all the ticker tapes going on right here. I'm going to get rid of the merch plug. Like this, there we go. I'm gonna keep this up though, because you all are important to me and I appreciate it. Um, I love Anton, <laughs> I love that you say uh, you wear your hat when you fly and uh, I love that. And I love that you're saying that uh, your license plate says, okay, see you. Very, very clever. Okay. Here we go. We have, uh, oh my gosh, we have another super chat from Rooster or Rooster73R. I can call you Rooster. Uh, wow. Again. Get it, Mikey. <laughs> That's, uh, you guys are too much. You guys are too much. Thank you so much for this generous, super generous donation. Uh, my cup runneth over. I, I don't know what to say uh, except thank you. Thank you for this. And uh, Charles Stevens has just upgraded his membership to a British Brigade Commander. Thank you so much for upgrading that, Charles. Uh, I think you'll find uh, that uh, you're going to get good value for, for your investment. So investment, oh my God, it just sounds so, it sounds corny. I'm sorry, it sounds corny. I do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. But this monetization and, and getting money to go into the account is is something that's so new and so foreign to me. Um, and uh, it, it, it's it's weird. It's weird, but I appreciate it, and this, this really helps. Uh, thank you so much. And um, for those of you who don't know, the money doesn't go into my pockets. The money that is uh, donated via Super Chat and memberships goes right back into um, creating content for this channel. We've got another Super Chat from the Walker Clan who just joined today, and they're giving... Uh, they're donating another $10. Thank you so much from them. It says happy to be in the community now more excited to see your upcoming work with the channel and avatar. Thank you so much everyone at the Walker clan. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I am too. Um, it's been, uh, you know, working on two different shows at the same time on the West coast has been really sort of eye opening for me. Um, and, uh, I'm looking forward to just really, really, really getting down to work, uh, with, with avatar and, and, and just sort of getting there and I'm excited to work with the cast. Um, Ken Lung has been announced as, as, as uh, Zhao in the cast. And I tell you, he's, he's like DDK, Daniel Day Kim and he, like those two are like the, for me, just these are two guys that I really looked up to in terms of Asian performers, just in terms of performers. Uh, but the fact that they're Asian as well is an extra sort of like uh, big bonus for me. And in fact, uh, little known fact, um, I liked Ken, Ken Lung's character. Well, I like him as a performer, but first saw him in a movie called Keeping the Faith with Ben Stiller and, um, what's his name? Edward Norton. And he's, he had a small role in it, but man, he stole that scene. He was fantastic in it. I loved him as a karaoke salesman, uh, when they were buying karaoke machine. And then we saw him in Lost and he played the character named Miles Strom in Lost. And Lost was one of my favorite shows of all time. Still is. It still is. And we can fight about the ending later. I found it emotionally satisfying. I know a lot of people didn't, but that's, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But I loved this character so much when it came time to name our second kid. That's Miles, 1000 miles an hour is named after Miles Strom. It's kind of named after Ken. So that's, that, that's how much I'm freaked out about getting a chance to work with him. And so I'm really super excited about that. Uh, but I'm gonna stop gushing now and we're gonna get to this. This beautiful thing right here. I, in fact, it's so big, I had to switch and got, I've got this, doo -doo -doo, I've got this other camera right here. I had to, I had to take my Sony uh, ZV-E10 and uh, I had to mount it over here and get a separate section here for this. The size of this box is gigantic. You can tell, I mean, this is, um, here, this, this is the quarter scale and I'll show you a, a sample of Just to compare it, this is a regular 1-6 scale figure. 
So already, just in terms of the size of the boxes, yeah, it's it's a big one. It's a big one. So where am I going to put it? <laughs> That's Anna's problem. No, it's not. It's Paul's problem. Paul in the future problem. I'll find a space for it. Anyways, uh, so I'm super excited about that. So uh, before we do that, we have... Uh, Ashley Brienzo is in the basement and hey, she's celebrating her four month anniversary as a member on this channel. Thank you so much. You're sneaking in during your work shift to say hello and happy holidays. Thanks so much, Ashley. It's so nice to hear from you. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're keeping safe. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna switch this over to here. Again, this monstrosity came. Now I got this particular, um, this figure uh, from Toys Wonderland. They're a fantastic company. Uh, they had it in stock and so I ordered it came super quick it came uh, in a shipper box that was wrapped in bubble wrap and um, I, I'm gonna point out now because people are gonna ask because they'd like to chirp me is it dented there's a bit of dentage happening here there's a little bit right here I don't know can you can you see it in the light can you oh there you can see it up here in the in the shadow right there that doesn't bug me Truly and honestly, um, it doesn't bug me. This this doesn't bug me, right there, because it's it's the sleeve, it's the slip sleeve. Uh, the big one on the back, where is it? Yeah, right here. This one. Yeah, it doesn't bug me. It's fine. It's all it's all fine. Fine. It's fine. It's all fine. I mean, it's a big box. It's being shipped across the world. It's not in a wooden crate. It's wrapped in bubble wrap. Why would it bug me? If Paul says that a dent in the box doesn't bug him, but you know what bugs him, take a drink. <laughs> uh, but really, it, it doesn't bug me. It's going to happen. It's, it's massive and it was in a shipper box and it was wrapped in bubble wrap. So what more can they do? Uh, but it came super quick and uh, I'm so excited to open this up now. I actually uh, laid first uh, eyes on this in person while I was at Sideshow Collectibles at, in Thousand Oaks, California. Uh, they had one, they've done an unboxing of it. Uh, it, was, it is available on pre-order through their website. Sideshow. I've included links in the description below for both places. And uh, yeah, like I, I, I got it from Toys Wonderland because I, I wanted it for an unboxing and it was available. So I ordered it and it came super quick. So let us take a look at it. Now the thing about these, these quarter scale figures, other than the size, is the boxing. I mean, right here, I don't know if you can tell, but this is actually a raised um, Mandalorian helmet and there's a little badge down here. Uh, it, this is all it's like embossed it's not a print on it's actually attached and it, it's got embossing it's got you can feel the texture of the visor of the different uh, it, it's just it's spectacular and they've got their special one quarter scale badge right there now this is a slip uh, slip sleeve uh, if you can see here there you've got the Star Wars label on the top uh, on the back here it says it's got the, let me see, there you go. Uh, it says quarter scale, collectible, Mandalorian and Grogu. This is the deluxe version. Um, and uh, yeah, they've even got a holographic sticker on it to prevent people from counterfeiting it. Because believe it or not, there are fakes out there. Yeah, this is really cool. I mean, it's not cool that they're fake. I kind of cool that they're fakes um, just because I mean, it's worth something then. If you're going to counterfeit something, then, then it's worth something. Anyways, uh, let's lift off. I'm going to lift off the, the slip sleeve here. Now, here's the other cool thing. So this, uh, with the other uh, Hot Toys, you lift off the case. This is car band, uh, usually on the inside. This, when you open it up. Yo! <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. So, cigar band. It's beautiful, beautiful cigar band, right? Uh, it's got, obviously, the Mandalorian. Uh, he's there holding the remnants of the E-Web cannon from season one, the end of season one. He's holding Grogu there. Uh, this is a foam, 
uh, foam lid, basically. And uh, I'm going to open this up and hopefully he doesn't come spilling out. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There he is. Look at the size of him. Look at the size of the Mandalorian. Now, he's got the plastic bag on his on his face, like the serial killer look. But I just want to, right now, just for a size comparison, I've got my Hot Toys Mandalorian. So that's, this is the regular size. That's a regular size. That's a quarter. Quarter. It's bigger. It is a lot bigger. It's gorgeous. And of course, with this size, comes a better level of detail uh, in the fabric, uh, in the sculpts, everything. So we're, we're gonna do, we'll, we'll do a little half ass comparison of one six scale Beskar Mandalorian and quarter scale Mandalorian. So I'm gonna put you right here, my friend, without spilling my beer, because that would be a Greek tragedy. I'll put you right there. Okay, oh, we have another member to the Bitter Brigade Officers Club. We have Ocean Wagner, welcome. Welcome, 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 my friend. Hope you have a good time. So we have, and here's the other thing. See how deep this box is? There's more. There are stacks and stacks and stacks. So first level here is the Mandalorian and Grogu. I'm gonna rip carefully. Yo, it's just the box. It's just the box. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna lift them out. that let's see we'll switch switch the view there to the overhead cam so there he is I'm gonna take this beer out of the way and I'm gonna take this other thing out of the way and I'm going to move this beer to over here so we don't have any spillage because that would be awful okay Okay, don't step on the cord. Don't step on the cord. There you go. See? Yeah, I've got an overhead cam. I have three cameras going. I have my default cam, my overhead cam. I've got the ZV-E10. Hello! For, for water shots. This was called the belly cam last week, which I, I kind of actually liked. And then I have the overhead cam split. Where I can do that. And I can, in fact, if I wanted to, I could split the other, the, the other camera angle too. But uh, here's the overhead cam. Right here, you've got Grogu, who looks like he's suffocating under here. Ah. Ah. Okay, we'll feel, ah, there we go. I gotta wait again. It's, there's something unsettling about that, having the plastic bags over their faces. I will ah, admit, not as unsettling as having his head pop off in your hand, but here's a sculpt. Look at that. Look at, look into my eyes. Yeah. Come on, focus, focus. There we go. So that's, that's Grogu. You can see the, you know, this is, this, this is actually better if you see it focus. Come on. See the stitching, the detailing in his jacket. It's much nicer. And it is, this is a, this is cloth versus the one, the one six scale Grogu, which has, this is all hard plastic. This is rubber, not rubber, it's plastic, right? So you have cloth with, with a larger scale, you actually get a chance to have this actual cloth. cloth. Uh, is the jacket fuzzy? Um, the collar is fuzzy, yes. The jacket itself is made out of, um, it's, it's like a, a sackcloth kind of material to it. It's very soft, it's soft. It's nice. I'm gonna remove these little plastic bits from his feet and his hands because that is really, really disconcerting. And I'm gonna put his head back on. Gonna do it, there you go. Right back on, right back on. And the jacket, is it removable? It is, is it? The jacket is, come on, focus, focus, focus. There you go. So yeah, the jacket is soft. It's like a canvas. Yeah, it is kind of like a canvas. It's a little bit softer than canvas. Um, there you go. 
in the bottom of his feet. Baby Gogu bum. Uh, I'm just trying to see if it's if you can open it. I, you can pull it. You can pull, pull it off. You can't unvelcro it or this or that. But it looks like you could just pull off the the cloak if you wanted to, just like that. And so that's Baby Grogu right there. And you have ooh different heads for Baby Grogu. Different ex facial expressions for Baby Grogu. I'm going to switch this over to here. Take a look. We have mouth closed. So you have just slightly different mouth open, mouth closed, ears down a bit for this one. So it's a different expression. Looks a bit more concerned. Um, you have. It looks like we have sp different ears. So the ears. Would you look at that? The ears are removable. You can pull out the ears so you can have ears up. Oh my god! Oh no! Uh, you can have the ears up or ears down to affect his mood. Which is super cool. Really, really cool. Alright, let's put this back in here. Alright, let's let's get to Mando. Your ears, ears, silica. So this is what, I, look at that. They even put a bit of foam padding underneath so you don't get any scratches on the armor. Oh. Oops, one of his charges came out. One of his grav charges came out. It came out. Where is it? There it is, oh, it's magnetic. All right, first, first off, this is heavy. This is, this is heavy. It's, uh, it's got weight to it. It's got heft to it. Plastic bags. Look at that. It's so shiny. And when I see the rubber booties on the feet, it always reminds me of like uh, when you go to like when you have movers come to your house or somebody delivering things and the delivery men uh, they put boots. Uh, baggies over the boots so they don't mark up the inside of your home or if you go to the dealership or, or sort of they, they'll have that um, they even have look at that a bit of plastic in the back to help scuffing there's there is the Mandalorian's back plate wonder if it's magnif magnetized if he has a jet pack um, I can already tell right here this clasp right here that's for slinging his ambient uh, rifle through if it's like the core like the uh, one six scale. Um, let's remove this plastic skirt. Okay. That's done. You know it's 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 tremendous. Like the hip armor here. It's flexible, which is really cool. Right, that that level of detail there. The the leather abdominal. Um, each of these, each of these cartridges, is removable. Wow. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of these plastic booties so that Mando doesn't feel like he has to worry about scuffing up the inside of my house. My nemesis. Tape. Feet baggies. Yep. Don't take them out. What kind of stand does it need? Well, we'll get to that, Steve. We will get to the stand because that is another large portion of this thing. Uh, two thirds of that box is accessories and the stand itself. Uh, I'm just going to point this out too in the overhead cam. Multiple hands for holding poses and multiple hands for baby Grogu as well. Right? So we have. Got these two. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Put him there for now. And put Grogu right beside him. I, you know, honestly, this is unbelievable. The, uh, how this looks right now with this. He's got the whistling birds there. Uh, he's got the flame unit there. 
um, the thigh armor, which is slightly different. This this do, under, does undergo a transformation later on from season one to season two. Uh, and then, okay, let me see if I can, I'll switch camera angles again to ZVE cam. Okay, here we go. So again, this is, we've got other layers in here. Uh, another clamshell, the traditional clamshell. This looks like there's a jet pack I can see right there, weapons and whatnot. Let's, let, let me pull out the tray. Right here, tray of accessories. Jetpack, you've got his Bregman pistol, vibro blade. Uh, you've got grappling hooks. Uh, here's the, the necklace uh, with the Mythosaur skull signet on it. Uh, there's a little control knob ball that Gro Baby Grogu loves to carry. The uh, locator, uh, plate of Beskar, the sack, uh, flames for a flame effect. We've got his Ambin rifle, pulse rifle there, and oh no! Damn! Batteries. Something lights up. My nemesis, batteries. And over here we have a couple of more uh, ankle balls, uh, the, the little the balls for, for the ankles and the wrists. Uh, do that. So that's that's the one level one of the accessories pack. Level two here is we've got. If you can see that, I'm going to pull this out, it's part two. Oh. Oh. There's more! I can stand up for this. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, so it's a two level, two part clamshell. Uh, the top half, which is just this lid here, has the, uh, right here. It's got the, the dynamic cable, so if you want him flying, you can do that. It's got the clamp, um, and it's got a clear rod here to help with that, that effect. So I'm going to just put that here, and it's a massive base. Uh, let's see here. We've got this is Grogu's the the floating bassinet, or the uh, the transport thing that Grogu stays in. Case does open up. Instructions. <laughs> Instructions, of course, of course, of course, of course. We have the instructions here. My favorite, because it helps us not ruin the thing. Right here. Okay. Ugh, it's getting hot down here. It's the beer. The beer and the heat. Instructions. My favorite. These are, it's a big one. It's a big one. Here we go. Right from the get-go. Uh, and the, the range of motion that's available for the Mandalorian's arms. Now I could feel it, they were ratcheted. So you can hear click, 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 click for every position that you put it in, which is great. So here's the range of motion, 80 degrees out to the side, 90 degrees out to the front. You can do 90 degree elbow band. 120 degrees for the splits. So you can't quite do the splits without breaking them. The leg lift, ooh, look at that, 120 degrees. So he could do a kneel if you wanted to. And here comes, this is the optional uh, head torch for the, uh, for the Mandalorian's head. Oh, he's got the little detonator from the beginning of season two uh, with the, um, uh, the crate dragon when they go blow it up, when they blow it up. And yeah, that's where the vibro blade goes. Be careful, the vibro blade is sharp. Love that. Love it. Amp pulse rifle, the strap. Yeah, this is just like the 1-6 scale, where it's got a magnetic clasp. 
And uh, that little back uh, belt loop thing that I showed you earlier on actually goes through a hole in the back of the cape and you can use it to attach the Ambin rifle. Look at that. Ooh, the scope! The scope is removable on the uh, Ambin rifle so you can actually use it the way he did. <gasps> Look, you can actually open up the rifle and put one of the charges in. One quarter scale, baby, one quarter scale. And this is helpful. It shows you which hands you need if you want each accessory. There you go. This is, this, this is why instructions are important, people. They're important. You don't just throw them away, okay? It doesn't mean you're smart if you throw them away and you figure stuff out. It just means, well, you might be smarter, but this, 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 this is foolproof way. This is a foolproof way getting to shut up anyways I, i'm loving this i'm loving this uh jetpack it is magnetized just like the one six scale this is how to attach the uh the grappling hook the flames baby grogu different ears you need to take his head off to put the necklace on apparently switch his hands range of motion for baby grogu he can kick a 90 degree kick right there clickety click grogu kick um this is how to open up the pram. He's got a little blankie in there for him to go. And this, this is the big gun right here. Right here. The base. It's a massive base, as you can see here. Right? Massive base. And look at that. All the decorations. There's a Mandalorian helmet that you can pop on there. Uh, you need, oh, AAA batteries for the base because it lights up. Right, uh, the clear rod is for Grogu's bassinet. Yeah, there's the crotch uh, holder. Oh, and it has, if you just want a simple, just him and Grogu, it's got that too. Look at that. This is phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. That was exciting. That's exciting, that's big, that's a lot. That's a lot, it's huge. It's huge. And this base here, this base, ace of base, uh, is, somebody pull this out. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think this comes up first. Like this is, this is ridiculous. Look at this. This is the E-Web, part of the E-Web cannon. <laughs> Look at it. It's, it's like the size of, this is crazy, crazy huge. I think it's upside down, there you go, it's upside down. Look at that, it's got the the detail on the, on the handles. Focus, don't look at my face, there you go. Look at that, the handles, there's a little scope setting up here, right? It's just gorgeous. No chi. There are no French instructions because this is from Hong Kong. They don't need French in Hong Kong. Uh, so there's that. Um, here we go. So I've got this, got this here. Let's look at some of this. This is okay. Wow. Check it. This is the base. Look at that. You have IG-11's helmet. Not helmet, look at IG-11's right there. You got the other Mando helmet. I don't want to move. Beautiful. And that's just part of the base right there. It's, it's hefty. It's gorgeous. And it looks like there's another ring here for other things. But look at the detailing on this base. Tremendous. Tremendous. And that's just part of it. Because you have as well... Second part of the base, which is the battery or the power converter for the E-Web that Moth Gideon explodes. Come on, focus, focus. And this will connect 
to this base and you can have either the Mandalorian holding that E-Web cannon or you can have it sticking up in a position there. Uh, this is fantastic. I'm going to switch over to that can. Here we go. So like that. Like this. And we have, where do the instructions go? Right. Oh, look at that. So IG-11's head actually rotates. You can rotate that, which is great. The hel this helmet itself is removable, apparently. It is. This helmet is removable if you wanted to. I don't know why you would want to. Oh, let me see. Uh, so if you wanted to get to the batteries, the batteries are down here. There's a switch down here to uh to turn it on in the battery case itself ah that's right so you need to remove this helmet to gain access to the battery case here so this is that's it and then there's the battery case let's put some batteries in it let's put some batteries in it but before we do cheers everyone Mm. That's a nice beer. That's a very nice beer. Oh, okay. Uh, Boy, gaining access, getting getting a screwdriver access to this is very difficult, though. Um. I need a shorter screwdriver. I'll need a shorter screwdriver than that. Uh, luckily, I have one. I'm just gonna go get it. It's a little ratchet set. Ha, I've got this little tiny ratchet set screwdriver right like that for just this occasion I want to lefty loosey righty tighty Except when it's upside down. Oh, nothing can be easy. Come on. There we go. You know what? I'm not gonna put batteries in. Because the last thing I think anybody wants to do is see me struggle to put batteries into something that lights up really silly like that. And you know what? I'm just gonna do that instead. Um, Hold on a second. Oh, is Yoko McCann here? Yeah, she is in the basement. Yoko's in the basement. Hey, Yoko, how's it going? Um, I'm going to try to get a smaller screwdriver. Hold on a second. I will be right back. Just give me a second here. Just give me a second here.
Okay, so I couldn't find the other. The other screwdriver. So, because, you know, right? Nothing can be easy. Uh, okay. Uh, let's do this instead. Let's do this instead. Let us just put it together and we'll pretend we know what it looks like when, when, when it lights up. Okay, so I'm going to attach this battery thing. Connects like that to the base. There's another hole here. These two things, there is. I don't know. Where is it? It's saying there's something else that I have to put into these two holes. Oh, these two back holes. Follow the steps and attach the diorama accessories to the indicated positions at the base to complete the setup. Okay. Just so you know, the BRB, the Be Right Back thing, was part of a, a, a package that Ecamm just sort of put. And I just thought I could do that or I could do, I mean, this is the one I made from before. But it wasn't really a technical difficulty, right? I was just getting a, a thing. Anyways, I'm lazy, so I went and I got that. Okay, so, one second. This, they're supposed to be, supposed to be a hose. I guess this is it. I guess this is not for dynamic flying. This accessories case. Right. These things here. Not for flying. Don't! Oh! I drunk. I'd assume this was like the dynamic, but this is actually uh, a soft sort of cable-like structure here. And this thing here, and this attaches from here to someplace else. But um, this apparently, this can go into one of these holes. And there's, I don't know what exactly it's for really. Uh, and this gets connected from, ah, from here to the back to under here. Just click. Click. And click. There you go. So now it's it's connected, uh, and then yeah, this is this is all part of the. Uh, I see. Okay, and then put that there for now. Grogu's the space bassinet actually pops open. Ooh, look at that! Hold on. So that's the inside of the bassinet. Look at that detail. That's actually, that's gorgeous, right? Right there. And in fact, it even has the little blanket that can go inside the bassinet. Accessories. Look at that. You have another set of whistling birds. 
for the Mandalorian. The locator. The Beskar ingot. The Bregman pistol. The vibro blade. This is the optional torch for the Mando's helmet. Torch. By torch, I mean flashlight. This is the blankie that goes in here. You can have a sack instead if you wanted. Batteries as is. The Ambin pulse rifle. The jetpack. I'm going to leave the flame unit and the grappling unit and the little ball toy in here because knowing my luck with the ball toy, I'd lose it. And uh, I'm not going to have him torching anything. Actually, I'm going to have him the mandolin do things. So I'm here. Here's the. This is a nice. This is. This is a nice soft material. Like this is. Can everybody hear me now? Has nobody heard anything for the last like 20 minutes or something? Or did I click on that by accident? Ugh. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> just a couple of seconds, okay. Uh, what I was saying, Ray, Blue Dragon, dude. Um, quarter scale? I was like, too big. No, 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 too big. But now... Uh, I got my first taste of quarter scale figs and posing and actually manipulating them um, when I was at Sideshow. And uh, I was part of, uh, you know, I, I got my hands on, first hands on a quarter scale thing and I was just absolutely blown away by it. So when I had a chance to order this at like 20% off, I was like, okay, done. Uh, because I had to share it with you, with all of you, because it's insane how detailed it is and how much fun. It is, and you think, you know, one six scale is great. Quarter scale is absolutely off the hooks. So um, that's a good question, Aaron. That's a good question. Uh, oh, thanks, Yoko. Yeah, I must've hit something when I was talking about the blanket. This blanket though, stretchy, very soft. Just gonna do this. I'm gonna put it here and then Grogu can stay in the blanket. There you go. You can stay in the blanket. In fact, there you go. This is, you can bend Grogu's legs and his arms. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Arm manipulation. And then he's there. He is there inside. Inside. Oh! Ah! He's fine. He's fine. He's always looked a little stunned. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't call the New Republic Child Services. Uh, that was an accident. <laughs> Could have fallen out anyway. Come on! His, his head came off. Oh my god. This is just turning into the... <laughs> He's fine! He's fine! It's not like I punched him. Okay, uh, and that's a reference, come on, that's a reference to the new, the, to the episode uh, eight, when the scout, biker scouts were punching him. Yes, I do have a cosplay of that biker scout who punches Grogu. Uh, there he is. But if it's nice and snug, he's fine. He's made out of plastic. He didn't feel a thing. Um, hey, behold, the Ambin Pulse Rifle. Right, don't stop. Look at that. Look at the size of that thing. It's huge. Look at the detail. This is, look, you can actually. Oh, 
I'm going to do this instead. You can actually... Look at that. It opens. It opens, and in here, you can take one of the Mandalorian's charges. Excuse me, sir. I'm just going to grab this. So I've taken one of the charges from from his from the his his bandolier. It actually freaking it fits in there. Look at that. Right? Is that nuts or what? The fact that you can do that. The bullets fit. That's crazy. And then you can also remove the sight. Right? Like, I mean, that is that is next level detail. Bravo. Hot Toys. Bra. Bravo. Right? Ugh. It's beautiful. It's just, that's, honestly, that is something that you don't, That that's something that you don't you know you don't think about and then but when you get a chance to do it it's cool right so that's the thing I talked I took this charge right from his bandolier and everything is removable everything on here is removable oh see it's a little grab charge that's removable from his belt fits right in there. Now, if they lit up, that would be even more insane, right? His holster. Let's take a look. See his holster there? You know. Is that the Bregman? Fits. Look at that. Like a glove. Like a glove. And this threads straight through. Look at that! Look at that! That's crazy awesome! Like that's, come on! That is so cool! That is so cool that you can do that! And yes, I am, I am almost 50 years old and I am nerding out over essentially what is a doll, action figure, collectible, uh, posable, but man, this 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 is not your 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 father's or your mother's or your granny's or your granddad's doll. This is not the GI Joe from the fifties. This is next level geekery. If you look at that, the stitching, the the patterns, like the the material. Look at that. Look at how the. Look at how it's 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 broken down. This is and the paint app. On the helmet, absolutely phenomenal. The articulation of the head, right? The way the way it, the 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 cloak is tucked in, screen accurate, my friends. Now, I will admit this material that they're using is not. It's close, but it's not quite the same as what they use on the show. That's got a bit more of a woven, uh, you know, woven look to it. This does not. This is more of a, a suede sort of look. But you know what? Oh my God! Talk about splitting hairs. That is splitting hairs. Even this, this ab abdominal bit. That's uh, this is you know uh, for the actual Mandalorian. It's a leather. This is pleather. But damn, that's that is so detailed and so close. Right? The paint app on this thigh armor changes color. It shimmies. It's, it, it changes. Like this is, you know, look, look at this. Even on, on the, the cartridges on each, on the boot. Nuts. Really nuts. The, the, knee, the new knee, uh, knee plate, knee pad thing. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Right? This is this is accurate to season two of the Mandalorian. Right? The leg gaiters, the boots, the treads. Bravo. 
bravo, right? And these are all things, like these accessories, right? They clip on to different spots. Like there's a place for everything, right? This vibro blade fits into the boot. There's a, there's a spot for it, right? Like that, fits right in. This is, I don't know. I just, I don't know how much I can gush over this. I'm super happy I have it. Uh, this is, and one of the other cool things about having something like this, uh, so one of the cool things about having something like this is posing it. Because there is, I mean, I've been just sort of slowly doing that with some of my 1 6 scale figs that I have in, uh, oh my God. yeah, I guess that's part of the problem. You're going to need a bigger table. Uh, one of the other things that I have in my display case back there, I've been, instead of just having them stand there and just stiffly, uh, one of the great things about going to the sideshow and meeting Terry Smith and watching Terry Smith. Now he's, uh, he, he is like a collector extraordinaire. He is like the king of posing figures. And I got a chance to meet him and chat with him. And I've watched his videos. Check out his YouTube channel. Check out his stuff on Sideshow.com. Uh, Sideshow's YouTube channel. Um, and it really is about posing these figures in a dynamic way. And it's challenging. And it's a lot of fun. And you know what? There's something really zen about it. Like, I could just... I just sat here this afternoon trying to repose a couple of my first order uh, troopers back there. So they weren't just sort of museum pieces. So there was a little bit of dynamicism to it. That was fun. I had a great time doing that. So, um, yeah, I can't, I cannot stress, uh, how awesome this entire kit is. Uh, I, uh, I'm not gonna lie though. It's expensive. It's expensive. But, uh, you know, like Andrew Fung says, you know, treat yourself. Every once in a while you gotta treat yourself. And, uh, I work hard. And, uh, again, this is something that, I enjoy sharing with you. So, like, if you if you wanna if you're on the fence about picking this up or not, um, man, I, I cannot stress how happy I am to have something like this in my collection. And I'm really looking forward to um, posing him and finding some place really cool to display him uh, and Grogu because this is something. If you're a collector, this is <coughs> excuse me, this is as premium as it gets. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's super cool. And hey, you know, if you keep the original shipping containers, the, the boxes and stuff, and you want to sell it later on, you'll get your money back. I think you'll get your money back for sure. So the resale value on these things are, are tremendous. But as a display piece, as a collector and a nerd, I love it. I love it. I'm really happy to have that as, as, as part of uh, my collection. So I said a couple of things there. I think that uh, warrant having a drink. Mm. That is good. I mean, I didn't make it. I talked about what I wanted to be like, and Connor over at Black Lab Brewery knocked it out of the ballpark. Basically, all I did was pour in like 10 buckets of honey into the steaming vat. Um, but I will have to say, uh, you know, Billy, Connor, and over at Black Lab Brewery, and Snoopy, um, that's a great place. You can pick up some of these. Uh, it is a light, refreshing drink, and I'm, I'm really digging it. Uh, it's only 4% alcohol. So, again, it's it's light. It's it's lovely, though. It's lovely. It's delicious. Okay. So, I know, I know, all right, Lee? It is, uh, that, that's a thing. That's a thing. It's not, being a collector nowadays, uh, it gets expensive because it's a slippery slope. You can... Everybody collects to their own uh, means, and I think, and that's a great thing. I think that's a great thing. You don't have to have super expensive things in your collection. You don't have to have any. You can start small, and just build from there. It's it's stuff that brings you joy, I think. And uh, there's some really great things. You don't have to go and get what everybody else is getting. Get what brings you joy. Get what you like, and I think that's that's super cool. Uh, and that's what it's about, and sharing that, and learning more about it, and watching these videos, and seeing other things that you would like as well, and maybe, you know, uh, you want to purchase or save up for or get. I mean, that's the joy of collecting too. Is just like the hunt of it. 
Uh, we've got, oh, look at that, another anniversary. My friend Joe Galati, he has been a member for four months. Congratulations, and you like their red color beer over Black Lab. You know, Black Lab has a tremendous selection of beers over there. Um, and yeah, I am pimping them out because uh, it's a great place. It's a fantastic place. Um, so, here we go. Uh, I'm looking at all of this here. Daniel, or you know, however you spell it. What is What is that? What is that regarding, my friend? What is that regarding? I know, somebody's posterizing me. Troopers and only troopers. What? What? And only troopers. Oh, I see. I see. That was a typo. I was like, hey, Cynthia Lynn is in the basement. How are you, Cynthia? I hope you're doing well. Uh, what, is, what does Ray have to say? I joke, but I appreciate this way this channel opens me up to things I never thought I would want. Yeah. Well, it's, it's about sharing the joy of, of, of collectibles. And... Uh, you know, this is, this is, <laughs> this is fun. I love sharing these. I, I love sharing this with, with all of you. It's fun. So thanks for watching. Uh, Ocean Wagner, you're back. What did you miss? I was just pimping out the beer. This delicious, delicious beer from Black Lab Breweries. That's about it. And uh, so just sort of chatting with everybody here about it. Um, so I'm going to cut back to this. It's, it's ginormous. It's ginormous. And here is... Here's his baby brother, right there, uh, and he's pretty detailed. I, you know, this is season one Mandalorian. You can tell he's season one Beskar. His knee plate is different, right? Season two, the Mandalorian, he's got more of this. This looks like the heavy Mando or the heavy infantry Mandalorians. I don't know if you can see this better. Let's do the, maybe if we do the overhead, uh, let me do this. So here's a quick and dirty sort of synopsis of the differences between season one and season two Mandalorian. That's guard. Season one. Here we go. So right here, this is a big giveaway right here. He doesn't have this big blue knee piece right here with the two cartridges or the flares. Or uh, I think these are actually rockets that can shoot out from his knees. So he became more deadly. Also, you can tell from the thigh armor has been changed. This looks like the old Durasteel that was left over. Obviously, this is Beskar. This is Durasteel. You can see the damage he took from it. That has since been replaced in Season 2 with this more refined piece of thigh armor. Right? Um, and, and pretty much, as far as I can tell, other than the color of the jumpsuit from Season 1 and 2, that's, those, are, those are the major differences right there so I, i'm sure cosplayers who are doing the mandalorian uh they are well they're more versed better versed than i am at it but for me just just looking at it oh oh here's another one um the weld plate is gone there's a welded section here in the knee armor right there that's different hey ron masuda how you doing buddy glad you could join us uh, he also looks like he's gotten bigger. Yes. Well, that is that is what steroids will do for you, John. That is what steroids will do. Okay. All right. That's cool. All right. So we have this. This was the massive. This was the big one here. Um, this is the one quarter scale Mandalorian with Grogu, uh, baby Grogu. Got it here. Uh, I got. Let's see. Let's put the jetpack on him. Did jetpack? Let's just. Let's go. Just stick some. You'd have to reposition the belt a little bit to get the jetpack to to stay on. Just a little bit, but it's it's pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy got him I'm gonna put him to the side right now and uh, we're gonna move on to our next thing and uh, our next unboxing now I have been away from home for a number of weeks and as such I've missed a bunch of movies that have come out in the theaters uh, one of which of course Ghostbusters Afterlife which I finally got a chance to see absolutely adored it I think as a fan of the original series it was everything that I wanted I cried I fully admit I will cry Hey, Marco. Marco Juan, thank you so much for your Super Chat donation. Uh, that's beautiful. 
$4.99. Thank you to quote Jack, uh, Jack Duskane, uh, Duskane? Duskane? Is that how you do, do Queen? Do, do, Duskane in Hawkeye. I feel like I've may, I may have missed something. Good to see you again, my Blue Jays friend. Yeah, um, hey, exciting news for the Mets. They got, uh, uh, uh Buck Showalter. That's, there, that's going to be a lot of accountability in that clubhouse from, from this point on. So that's cool. Um, Jack Duquesne. That's it is. Uh, great series, Hawkeye. Really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for your generous donation, my friend. Um, yeah, but yeah, I was able, getting back to it, I was able to finally get a chance to see Afterlife with the family. I've been promising to see it with my family. Uh, absolutely adored it. Uh, it hit every note for me. Uh, touch predictable. I knew what was going on. Some of it was spoiled because of Hasbro, of all places. Uh, but it did not lessen the emotional impact that movie had on me when that incident happened. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody else. So, there you go. Um, Duquesne. It is Duquesne. Okay. Duquesne. Thank you, Mike. Bad Wolf Media with the save there. Uh, okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, Buck and Scherzer. <laughs> that should be interesting. Um, Rooster saying, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Me and the husband have been solidly debating it. What is the debate, Rooster? What is the debate? Absolutely. Without a doubt. One of my favorite movies of the year. Yes, I had friends who worked on the movie. Yes, there was a lot of fan service in it. Yes, they brought back the original Ghostbusters. But that's kind of what made it work. And it, I didn't. I, I personally didn't feel it went overboard to the fan service. Now, I will be watching the movie again and again and again. Oh yeah, I will. I ordered the uh, the special eight disc edition with all the movies in it, minus the 2016 version, which I liked. Uh, and I can understand Paul Feig's uh, disgruntlement over it not being included. But I sort of see it as. You know, the 84 Ghostbusters, the 89 Ghostbusters in 2021. That is in the, all in the same universe, so that belongs together. The 2016, because it was a reboot, I don't know. Uh, if it was included within it, I still buy it anyways. If it's not, I, I feel like, uh, for me at least, that's a separate movie. I own it. I already own it in 4K and in Blu-ray. So, uh, I can understand... Some of the disgruntlement because there was so much hate for that movie and I think it was unfair because I did like it. But uh, in any case, I bought the 8-disc, pre-ordered pre it, the, the 4K uh, Ghostbusters series. So, there we go. Uh, do you need to watch, Kevin Lee is asking, do you need to watch Ghostbusters Afterlife in theaters? I think so. I think so. You need to see it in the big on the big screen. I think just the scope of it, the scale of it, you'd enjoy it more. I mean, is it absolutely necessary? No. But I think as a fan, you'd enjoy it more. We saw it in the movie theaters. It was just us. We weren't allowed to eat or drink in the movie theater, and we all still loved it. So, uh, And I'm glad I saw it in the theaters instead of just on TV. That's one of the movies for me you got to see on the big screen. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Tommy K said he saw a Mad Max box set that didn't include Beyond Thunderdome. That's strange, but uh, okay. That's, yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't, why would they ignore that one? Hmm. Anyways, uh, so I, anyways, I digress. So 2021, weird year for movies, uh, but we were finally able to see, um, I really want to see the final Bond movie. Die another day. No time to die. Good Lord. They had a James Bond marathon I was on and they had, all these movies, so they're all... I got Octopussy in the spot for your eyes only, confused, and this and that. Anyway, so, uh, No Time to Die, we're able to finally see. Now, talking about seeing it in the movie theaters versus seeing it at home, I saw it, we saw it, No Time to Die, at home. Didn't get a chance to see it in the movie theaters uh, because it was gone. Um, so we got the 4K uh, Steelbook Edition, cracked that open, put it in, watched it, absolutely loved it. Loved it. Thought it was a great... Ending to the Daniel Craig era of Bond films. This is my opinion. Uh, I just thought it was really cool. And they, a lot of callbacks to some of the old series, like the George Lazenby in particular, Her Majesty's Secret Service, right from the, the song usage to some of the lines. Some of the themes are very, very similar. 
So there was that. And um, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the ending. I'm not going to spoil it, spoil it for you. So when I saw this offered on Amazon, I had to pick it up. And uh, this is right here. Whoa! This is the special No Time to Die gift set. Uh, I saw it. I was like, boom, need to have it. Want to see it. James Bond. Uh, I grew up, my Bond was Roger Moore. At the time, I didn't realize how old he actually was. Looking back at it now, his movies have not aged well. Uh, he has. Uh, there's a lot of horrible things that are still rein that, that were reinforced uh, in those movies, uh, but it was a different time. So I'm not going to dwell too much on that. But uh, No Time to Die for Me had all the elements of a Bond movie that you needed. Uh, big, big stunts, exotic locations, uh, complicated ac action sequences, proper villains, uh, cheeky remarks. And um, yeah, and I thought Daniel Craig, his entire Bond series, um, there weren't very many misses. There were a couple of missed notes, but I think for the most part, uh, it was a Bond that uh, I really felt did did justice to, to that whole um, series. So that's why I grabbed this uh, right here. Uh, Chris Sang, my, my neighbor, you've never seen a Bond movie? Really? Dude. All right. I got the whole box set. I'm going to lend it to you. You're going to watch it. You're going to watch every single one of these movies. Well, not all of them. Yo, no, you're going to. You're going to. I'll make you watch it. Or I'm going to lend it to you and you're going to have to watch it. Um, starting with, of course, Sean Connery. Uh, but you're going to watch that. Uh, who do you got? We got here. Pierce Brosnan went to your high school, Colin? Wow. Wow. All right. Here we go. Aaron S. No, for me, no time to die was okay. I didn't love it, but didn't hate it. Just didn't do it for me. Happy others enjoyed it, though. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That's, you know, for everybody, it is a personal experience. So I'm not here to yuck your yum. But uh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there you go. For Patrick Really Velasquez, Dr. No was his. Uh, all right. All right. So let's, let's, let's look at this here. Let's do this <laughs> so here it is uh this view i find isn't as good anymore because i have not removed uh any of the quarter scale stuff so i've lost my table space but this is uh a good example of the size of the box set i'm going to uh slip up slip it open here there is a slip case that uh i need to remove i'm gonna do it off to the side whoops there goes the webcam there goes the webcam. Right, so, slipcase has been removed. I'm going to put you right in there. And this leaves the box. It's uh, got a gorgeous embossing on the cover as well. I'm going to switch this over to here, over the cam. Uh, this looks like a box that you lift up. It's a hinged, just because there is no opening here it seems to be attached a little bit of wrinkling here a little bit of wrinkling here with the with the material uh that's a bit disappointing especially for the cost of it but it is the container I'm gonna open it up and holy crap look at that so you open it up and uh man i can't pull this back from it mm, well, I can't. So basically, you open it up, and this is what you get. So you've got the 4K edition of, of the movie up top there. The slip cover uh, looks like a special one because it, it's got the metallic effect on it. And of course, you have the little box that's labeled Aston Martin right there. That is the Bond car, right? I'm going to lift this out. Ooh. Okay. So that's the movie. 
There's an envelope behind the movie. 007. And you have a card set as well. So let's take a look at this first. So the movie I have, which is great, but uh, I, I think, I don't know. I don't know if the slipcase is, is unique to this uh, or to this set or if all the slipcases uh, have this metallic sort of uh, foil look to it, which is great. Mm -hmm. Of course, here it is. Now, this is new for me. Apparently, slip covers are a big thing for 4K collectors. I don't know why, I don't get it. Uh, my buddy Winton, who uh, has a 4K uh, selling group, um, the slips are, are unique to first runs of 4K movies. And then once they go through a second run, they, they don't do the slip cases anymore. But slip cases, there are people who actually go and just buy the slip case. Right? So, that's great. And so we have some card stock here. Let's open this up. <laughs> Aaron S, you need that slip. See, there you go. Bye, Sean. See you, brother. Thanks for dropping by, my friend. All right. So these are they're like lobby cards. Ooh, look at that. Bond. The new 007. <laughs> Cute. Look at that. So these are a lot of the, the, the main characters. Of course, this is Bond's contact. Later on, on a mission. She's fantastic. Uh, she was also nice out. I can't remember the actress's name. It's great. <laughs> Gary throws his slips out. <laughs> Gary, you could save those slips and you could sell them. Honestly, people love those slips. So you've got some character cards, which is fantastic. These are all great publicity shots of all the, the performers in the movie. And you've got this embossed card, 007 label on it. Now the question is, can I open this without... Hate ruining stickers, especially pretty embossed stickers that have 007 on them. So we play the game. Yeah, and I ruined it. Just blew it right at the end, blew the landing. But inside is a card that says, oh, it's all washed out, here you go. This limited edition DB5 has been created exclusively in celebration for the 4K ultra release of No Time to Die, Aston Martin, 153 of 510. So, that's the other, that's the portion there that's still in the box that we haven't gotten to. I'm going to get to it right now. Of course, it's upside down. Of course, of course! Marco Juan just became a member. Welcome to the Bitter Brigade. Marco, you've been part of the Bitter Brigade before. Maybe you've upgraded? I don't know. All right, so I'm going to lift this. Wow, 
this box out. It's in there very, very securely. There we go. Ooh, okay, I will admit when I saw this on the uh, when I saw this uh, there you go uh, on Amazon, this is the reason why I wanted to pick up this set uh, first of all uh, more than anything else because you can get the movie, you can get the cards, but this is something that I really really wanted because uh, I thought it was cool. Let's open this up. Foam. Because nothing can be easy. Take a drink. Oh, mother pus bucket. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And of course, it's hermetically sealed with tape. So, let's do them. Marco, it's okay that you're a Yankees fan. Nobody's perfect. Oh, Podrick's downstairs. Okay. Here we go. Everybody ready? Ooh. It is. Come on, focus. There we go. There you go. It is. And Austin Martin. It comes with a display stand. No time to die. Instructions. Of course, it's got the tie downs. What is it made of? Uh, the base is made out of plastic. I know it's it's metal. This is die cast metal. This is uh, it's quite stunning, actually. It's nice and heavy. It's die cast metal. Uh, ooh, it's got the mini guns. Come on, come on, focus. Mini guns up front, just like in the movie. It's heavy. This is this is heavy. This is not, and of course it's got the tie downs. So luckily I have my tools here. I'm gonna just on the bottom this here pegs as well so if you wanted to place it down for display they've included some screws the instruction manuals on how how to screw it in place oh 
I know. One six to one quarter, and now I'm back to 118. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? Yeah, Casino Royale. I mean, that, that was the, the movie that really sort of rebirthed the entire franchise again, gave it some more relevance. You know? Look at that. So it says what it does. Look, it says you're not supposed to go vroom, vroom. Do not. Here, hold on. Do not go vroom vroom with it. You can't, you can't do it. I'm gonna, you're not the boss of me. It's my car now. If I wanna drag race it with the DeLorean or the Ecto-1, I'm going to. This is, this is. That's a smooth, smooth roll. Right? I'm, I'm doing it, I don't care. You're not the boss of me, I own you now. Where's Dominic Toretto? I'll race him. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so you can put it on display if you want. Just be boring. Or you could drag race it. But yeah, it's basically you put it down. Yeah, you put screws in on the bottom and you can just put it on the on on the, the tray and keep it the way it is if you want. I mean, hey, that's if you want to do it like that, you can. So basically, this part goes down, you know, Lays down in the in the slotted part here, the car. You can fit the uh, the pegs to there, and then from the bottom, you can take this screw set from underneath. You can put it in there, and then Bob's your uncle. So that's it. That is so. But this is this is the limited edition. No time to die, gift set with the diecast metal, Austin Martin from and I want to look at the find out who the maker of this there are no markings on it no markings no nobody says who the who the what company created it which is a shame because this is this is a great sculpt I mean the uh yeah, doors do not open, uh, but it's a solid, just, you know, it's a very simple, simp it's a simple uh, version of it, but still fairly detailed. It's all metal. Like these, these, uh, these rear view mirrors, you would think on other makes, they would be plastic. This is metal. The guns, that's metal. The grill is plastic. The bumper is plastic. Look at me. Vroom, 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 vroom. Suck it, nameless company. You're not the boss of me. Anyways, that's it for me tonight. I got uh, this great thing here. Uh, one quarter scale. Hot Toys, Mandalorian and Grogu Deluxe Edition. Fantastic. Uh, no Time to Die. I enjoyed it. If you like Bond, I think you'll enjoy it too. This gift set, uh, is it worth the money that I paid for it? No. No. But it is limited edition. Um, 501 of these units, so they will be collectibles uh, eventually. Hey, I got a, I have a Terminator arm from T2 with the... With the uh, that came with the 4K set. I got it for like 200 bucks. I thought it was rip off back then when well, I didn't think it was rip off. Anyways, you can you can sell it for 600 bucks now, even if it's open. So it goes up in value. Something like this, eventually it'll go up in value. If not, hey, I still got a cool car that I'm really happy to have. Uh, it is expensive. That was $250 on Amazon.ca. So, but again, there's only 500 units. Uh, we have a new uh, member here. We have even the collector has joined us. Welcome to the Bitter Brigade, Officers Corps. Uh, and um, yeah, this is this has been fantastic. I'm so happy that I was able to to get the last couple of um, Fun Boxing Sundays in under the wire last week. This week, um, we have one more. We could possibly get into the new year. That would be January 2nd. I believe will be Sunday. I'll let you know if we do that because I do actually have to get packed up 
and go to Vancouver uh, on the Monday. So uh, I'll make an announcement hopefully soon as to whether we're doing a fun boxing next Sunday. But until then, everybody, happy holidays. If I don't see you um, before, have a happy and safe new year. Uh, I just got boosterized a couple of days ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel good about having it. I've had no no side effects, no nothing. I haven't gotten radioactive. I haven't gotten any superpowers, no 5G chip, none of that stuff. But I do have a, a renewed sense of hope and uh, confidence that uh, if and when I do get COVID, the Omicron version, uh, you know, it, it won't send me to hospital because I've got the vaccine. That being said, 49 years and COVID free still. So uh, all of you stay safe. Uh, keep washing your hands, wear a mask, get vaccinated, get your booster if you can. Um, it just seems like one wave after another, but this one seems to be burning out pretty fairly quick. So let's get safe. Let's get back to normal. Uh, thank you again so much for, for tuning in. This makes my week uh, and you've all made my year. So I'm really excited for what the new year brings in terms of work, in terms of fun boxing Sundays, in terms of this channel. We got to 15,000 subscribers. I'm so happy for that. We've got to close to 100 members. Uh, that really warms my heart. And uh, to all of you who are out there, uh, know that you are part of a tremendous community. And this is what we want to build together um, so we can support each other and celebrate being nerds and geeks out there. So until then, uh, stay safe. And um, yeah, we will see you in a bit. May the force be with you. And uh, okay, see you.